Well, good morning. Mara and I have been doing this together for a long time. So I think the first time I came here to New Life was almost 20 years ago. When Pastor Chuck was here. That was a long time ago. But it's always great to be here. So if you have a Bible or a phone, turn to John chapter 11. I want to tell you a story today. It's an amazing story. Now, I have been a pastor for almost 45 years. So I started pastoring when I was five years old. <laughs> One of the things that we do as pastors, we do lots of counseling. We do leading and sharing, healing and marrying. There's a lot of things we get to do, lots of diversity. But the hardest thing is burying people that you love. And during COVID, we buried lots of people. One week in our church, we did 11 funerals. But every week we did two or three for two years. And death is like a horrible intruder into life. But sometimes death is also a blessing. When Jesus enters into your journey, death turns into life. And that's the story in John chapter 11. So we're going to read a bunch of verses together and talk about the story. So it says in verse 1 of chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany. He was in the village with his sister Mary and Martha. And Mary is the one who anointed the Lord with oil. And she wiped his feet with her hair. Her, her brother Lazarus was very sick. So his sisters went to Jesus and sent a message to him. And they said, the one that you love very much is sick. But Jesus made this strange statement. He said the sickness is not going to end up in death. But it will deal with the glory of God. And the Son of God will be glorified in 
ปริจบทตราบอกพระองค์นั่งตรบานติดตัวในเสรีรงเรื่องในขนมใส่เรื่องนั่งปริสุเมนเปรมันตูนจัง Then it makes a really weird statement อาเอาไว้ได้ละพระองค์มาจับปริสุคริสเมนเปรมันตูนแต่การเนียงแมรีนั่งมาทานนั่งคือทาเชื่อเรื่องได้จำไล่มันเต้นมันดูกระปุกมาเชื่อแต่พระองค์เสรีรงเรื่องดอกเปรจิมจับวันได้เชื่อจำไล่ It says now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. I n e o m s a y o u n g n o a h a n a y s i s t s l n i n g t h a n i n g Mary, h n g l o s a n a So let me ask you a question. k i m j o n g s o m s s o m d l o o n Why did John write that in there? h a m a n l o o h a n m a n s a y o u n g n o a h Doesn't Jesus love everybody? t a p r a y a u s s l n m a r e m e n t Yes or no? Bad, m a n Yes. He loves everybody. So why did John say that he loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus? Had a man j u p r e a p e l o o k y o h a n got to say ta. Oh, pra ang n g pra ang salang n g ma ta Mary h n g l o o k lasa. Because he was going to tell a story that was very difficult. ดยซาตกดนังมันตอสัจเรื่องทัสัจเรื่องนังเตมุกติดเวียนนังลมบักลังนะ A story that looks like He wasn't loving them very much. h s a n r n g n t a t n t n e t s l h e t It was like he was reminding us, don't forget when things are hard, Jesus still loves you. h o u s a s n r n g d r m l k r a n r m l k o l n p n k t a u n k a n k n c h i t a n g s n r n g m n p m n i t a n g m n y n g n c h p m n r n g r d l m b a k l n g m n t n So he goes on in verse 6. Says when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days longer where he was. Then after that, he said, "Let's go to Judea." Hai ban toap mong, prang tha som chen dam na tu sap chu da. And his followers said, "We shouldn't go there, Rabbi, because they almost killed you last time you were there." Hai sa ve a bap prang thao lu kru yeng man tu tu sap chu da te ka lu yeng tu ka lu mu na ki chang sam lap yeng nu tin hu ai. And Jesus said, "Yes, but we will walk in the light as long as there is light." For a n g m a j e s u s Christ, go min p r e p a n t u te kan sa tha kanong ka da yeng nu pe thay nu min pun lu na lai cho ban to da nu kanong pun lu cho. Now down in verse 11. Snap da cho da ko ti da mui. It says after he told them this, he explained to them, "Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep." Cry mo. พระองค์มีเปรียบบรรทุลเตกิทามติดตาลาซาจิมมิดสำลังระบายเยิงสำราญลุตะไฮเยิงเขียมเตร์ตาเตกดักกอดกอดอ้อยเพียรลางวิ่ง But was Lazarus asleep? ลุกเนี่ยมองโอ้ไหนตาลุกลาซากอดเกยลุ่ยหรือมวยกอดกอดสลับ Yes or no? กอดเกยลุ่ยไหมเนี่ย No. Do you know this story at all? ดังเรื่องดังเงี้ยลุกเนี่ยมองโอ้ Was Lazarus asleep? ตาลูกลาซากดก่อนเกงยืนก็มา Lazarus was dead. ลูกลาซาสลับบัดตะหอย And it says they were saying to him, then why would you go there if he's just asleep? ถ้าพระองค์บอกพระองค์มาจากประสนมากดก่อนสำลานลูกโดยใช้ตาตาจำใบเตอร์นงตะไอ้ He's going to get up and be okay. ไอ้พระมิตรแปลมันตูท่าลาซาดังกอดดังเพียรลางวิ่งอัดไอ้ที่ And then Jesus looked at them all and said, "He's dead." ให้พระองค์มาจากปานมือเดบุกเกย์เดบุกเกย์กระทาลาซาสลับบัดหาย And then he made this strange statement. คือบุกเกย์บานเมียนจมน้อยมวยดากูอ้อยจมไล่คลังมันเต็น He said, "I'm really glad I wasn't there because then you're going to know who I am." เราสังเคียมเราเอาเงินไปบรรทุลท่ายังสบายจัดได้ยังอัดบานเตยตีนู่บ่ายยังมันบานบ่ายยังมันมาบ่ายยังเนยตีนู่เกณฑ์หนึ่งมันดังไทยยังเจริญนาเต้ so down in verse 17ในข้อที่ดับประปี it says when Jesus came he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days ข้าวปริยสุยังตดอน so เราเอาก็เชื่อท่าเกณฑ์บรรดาลาซาในขนมพนบุญทั้งไงจะหาย so let me explain this to you สมัยเขียนบรรยุลออกลูกเนี่ยบอกพระองค์มันติด Jesus was about 20 miles away from Lazarus when he found out that he was sick พระเยซูคริสก่อนไล่เนี่ยพระองค์เนี่ยแก่เลยลูกลาซาชื่อนั่งจมง่ายไปหายเยอะตุ้งสามสับกโลเชียง he could have been there in one day walking คือพระองค์อาจเฟื่องหนาสมัยจะด่าก็ด่าได้ 
But he didn't go. So he waited two more days. Then on the third day he went. And it says here Lazarus had already been dead for four days. So Lazarus died the day that they brought the message to Jesus. And he was probably already dead before they told Jesus the message. So it says in verse 18 that he went off to Bethany and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. And Martha, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. And but then Martha said to Jesus, If you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. Have you ever felt that when one of your friends was sick? That if Jesus would just show up, he could fix everything. During COVID, I lost my best friend. He went into the hospital, went on to a respirator. A respirator where they put in. Okay. Uh, and then he died. And I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe the Lord didn't come and rescue him. I couldn't believe the Lord didn't and he, he touched thousands of people. Thousands of people for Jesus. He fed the poor. He cared for people all the time. And then he was gone. Just like Lazarus. So it says, down in verse 20, that Martha came and when she heard he was there and she asked him, why didn't you heal my brother? And verse 22, she said, Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, He will give it to you. And then Jesus made a statement that we're going to talk about some more in a few minutes. Jesus said to her, your brother's going to rise again. Martha said, I know on the last day, on the resurrection day, that he will rise from the dead. And then Jesus said, no, I am the resurrection and the life. Who, whoever believes in me will live even if they die. And then verse 26. 
If you have a Bible, you should underline verse 26. It's one of the most important verses in the whole Bible. It says, everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Everyone who lives and believes in Jesus will never die. That's a crazy statement. statement Nobody in the history of the world has been able to say that and make it happen. Nobody but Jesus. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will live even if you die. So my friend Joe, he's still alive today. He's just not alive here. But he is just as alive as you and I. Even more alive than us. Because this world came from the spiritual world. And that is really your home that you're going back to. So Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even the one who comes into the world. And after she said this, she went away and got her sister. Said, Jesus is here and he wants to see you. So they got up quickly and they came to Jesus. And Jesus wasn't even to their village yet. He was still where Martha and he had talked. But the Jews saw Mary get up and go out the door. They all wanted to know where is she going? They thought maybe she was going to his grave so she could mourn some more. Says in verse 32, When Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and she fell at his feet. And she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus saw her weeping. And the Jews who came with her were also crying. And the Bible says his heart was moved deeply. So let, let me ask you a question. Did Jesus love Mary and Martha and Lazarus? Yes. Did he allow them to suffer? Did he allow them to struggle? Did he Yes or no? Yes. Yes, he did. So will he allow you to suffer sometimes? 
Will there be times when you cry out to the Lord? Say, Lord, come and help me. My heart is breaking. Why won't you do something? But sometimes Jesus' love permits us to be to feel pain, to struggle. Sometimes Jesus' love is very mysterious. Very difficult to understand. When you see your children struggle, do you want to rescue them? Yes. When you see your friends struggle, do you want to rescue them? Do you yes. think when you struggle, Jesus doesn't want to rescue you? But there are times he doesn't show up. And they, they ask him, why didn't you show up? And this is the answer. I want you to believe more. I want you to trust me deeper. Don't just trust what you can see with your eyes. You've got to believe past your pain in your heart. So sometimes God will test you with struggles. He wants to know where your heart is. Will you trust him even when it gets hard? And I want to ask you that again. Will you trust him when it gets hard? It's easy to worship when life is easy. It's easy to praise when everything's going good. How do you do when things get hard? This is when we find out what the Holy Spirit is really doing inside of you. This is when we find out what you're allowing God to really do with you. When your pain is high. And your struggle is deep. The Bible says that God is near to the brokenhearted. But it never says he will not allow you to be brokenhearted. It never says you won't feel pain. It never says you won't feel loss and struggle and sorrow. The Bible says Jesus was deeply acquainted with sorrow. So I want to ask you again, did he love these people? Look at what it says in the next verse. Verse 33. It says when Jesus saw that they were weeping and the Jews were weeping, 
เปลเปรยสุคริสต์ຄັນຍັງແມຣີນັ້ນຈົນຈິດຢູດາໄດ້ຫມົກຈະມວຍນຽງຍົມໂດຍຊ្នេះ your family members face death or your friends are sick or something happens that hurts you very deeply and this breaks God's heart it says here that Jesus wept. It says, Where have you laid Lazarus? And then Jesus said, They said, Come and we will show you where he is. And then verse 35 in John chapter 11 is the shortest verse in the whole Bible. It's just two words. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? Did he know he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead? He knew? He knew he was coming to raise Lazarus from the dead. Why did he weep? The same reason he weeps over you when your life is hard. His heart is broken when your life is hurt. He weeps over you. It says in Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. It says, call upon me in your day of trouble. And I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Does God care about your suffering? Always. Always. He said he would never leave you or forsake you. In the middle of your pain when things feel very difficult and impossible. You need to keep believing. You need to keep pressing into the Lord. You need to run to God. Run to God. Don't run away from God. Run to God. When your heart is hurt, run to God. And He will touch you. Because he loves you so much. His heart is broken for you. Jesus understands your pain. Isaiah 53 3 says that Jesus is a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. When my friend died, I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, why did you need to take him now? 
There's no answer for that. Until we get to heaven. You have to trust what you cannot see. You have to believe beyond your feelings. That God is good all the time. And all the time he will be good. He will delay sometimes. But he will never abandon you. He will come and care for you. So look at verse 38. It says Jesus was deeply moved. And he came to the tomb. Now you need to understand this word in the original language. It says he was deeply moved. It means he was full of anger. He was full of anger as he came to the tomb. Because he hates death. Jesus hates death. He came to bring life to people. And he that's why your church is called New Life. Because Jesus came to bring new life. In Hebrews 2.14 It says because God's children are human beings made of flesh. Jesus also became flesh and he was born as a human. Because only then could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of death. The power of the devil. Only in this way. Could he deliver those who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of death? You know Jesus died so you wouldn't be afraid of death. That's why he said, if you believe in me, you will live even if you die. So he came to the tomb. He says it was a cave and there was a stone against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. And Martha, the sister of Lazarus, she said, he will be rotting already if we move the stone away. He will stink. He's been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you if you would believe that you would see the glory of God? So they rolled away the stone. Yes. They rolled away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and began to pray to the Father. And he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. 
Prangman prem min prem ban tu tha prang ma cha hai tu bang kum som o kun prang dai prang ban chat tu bang kum mai mao I know that you always hear me tu bang kum dang tha prang tai ta san dap pi dai tu bang kum ati tha But I pray this prayer out loud for all the people that are watching Nai tu bang kum ati than pi ni dam bai ai oi ne dai mue tu bang kum And then he cried out Nai ba to mo prang ban srai cheng ngao And he said Lazarus come forth And it says that he got up and walked out of the tomb. Do you know why he said Lazarus come forth? Do you know why he called him by name? Because if he would have just said come forth, all the dead people would have come alive. That's the kind of power that Jesus has. He has power over death. The Bible says that he wants to defeat the last and greatest enemy. Your fear of death. 1 Corinthians 15:26. It says, Christ must reign until he humbles all of his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So 1 Corinthians 4.13 says this. We do not want you to be uninformed. About those who have died or gone to sleep. For you would not grieve as people with no hope. Some of you are in difficult places today. You cry out to the Lord. You say, Lord, where are you? Do something to help me. I want you to bow your head. I want to pray for you. Father, we come right now. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, you are our comforter. You heal us. You redeem us and then release us. You move with power in the midst of our pain. To teach us to trust you more. Now Jesus said these words. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he said these words. Do you believe this? That's the most important question anybody could ever ask you. Do you believe Jesus can take you from the grave into eternity? If you are here today and you have never given your heart to Jesus, He's talking to you right now. And He's saying to you, Do you believe this? I am your king and your creator. Do you believe? 
that I can raise you from the dead. If you believe this, I can change your life. If you have never surrendered to Jesus, but today you want to say to him, I believe this. I want you to put your hand up right now for me so I can pray for you. Good for you. Please keep your heads bowed. Good for you. Good. Good. There's a bunch of you that have your hands up right now. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if this prayer is your heart, I want you to pray it out loud. You said a lot of things out loud you should have never spoken. I am asking you to say something out loud that will change your whole destiny. So if you raised your hand and you want to open your heart to Jesus today, I want you to speak these words. Lord Jesus, today I come to you and I surrender to you I don't understand everything but I know this I need a savior and you are my savior you died on the cross for me you rose from the dead for me you conquered death for me and today I repent I have wounded your heart I've done things I never should have done and my heart is broken today would you please forgive me today I surrender to you and I ask you Lord come and heal me come and touch me please Father please forgive me thank you for your love for me thank you for your love now if you prayed that prayer for the first time today I want you to stand up so I can see you Good for you. I want to invite you to come forward here so I can see you. Come up here so I can see you. Come I want to pray for you. Father, we come to you today. And I come with my brothers and sisters. And I say, bless them, Lord. Bless them, Father. 
bless them. So pratin po da po kwat. I pray that you would move with power in their lives. That you would touch them, Holy Spirit. Release your peace in their lives. Release your hope in their lives. Release your forgiveness. So today would be a new day for them. Today would be a great day of celebration. That you would become their resurrection in life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now we celebrate with the Lord. Thank you, Father. So some of you need to receive prayer. You need to tell somebody that brought you to church today. I want to start growing with Jesus. Some of you are struggling with sorrow right now. And God wants to touch you and heal you. So as we close up right now, I want to ask you to come to the front for prayer. And there's a team of people up here to pray for you. God bless you. Have a great week.